Hello everybody and welcome back to OMB Reviews. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope we're doing well and today we're doing a box office breakdown for this past weekend which saw the second weekend numbers of Black Panther Wakanda Forever have a very strong hold, uh, basically a very, a, very a very typical hold for a major Hollywood blockbuster like it, dropping 63% in the domestic marketplace while having a much stronger than expected international hold, even besting previous Marvel releases from this past year, which uh, yeah, let's just say it's putting this film in a position to do much better than what people had expected and I warned people saying do not look and if you were listening to the Salt and Nerd podcast yesterday uh, thank you for doing so um, yesterday morning we did the morning stream over there and someone had asked the question about what I thought about the box office and I said hey you're gonna see a lot of videos talking about that Friday to Friday drop and I think you know clickbaiting in a lot of ways but ultimately when it comes down to it they are not going to be taking into account the Thursday premiere numbers of the first Friday, which are going to result in a much higher Friday to Friday drop, and then not taking into account the Saturday and Sunday numbers, which ultimately make those up in the end. And that right now we're seeing the film drop 63% from week one to week two. So we'll dive into these numbers. What I suspect that we will see basing this off of typical historical standards and also where some of the other films to come out this weekend have ended up and also the fate of Black Adam essentially being sealed. Before we get any further, though, please make sure you smash that like button button, let that fire button if you're watching over on Odyssey, smash the rumble button as well. And also make sure that you have the notification bell turned on. That way, you know, every time a new video or live stream goes live on the channel. So as you see from Deadline, it has closed in on $550 million worldwide after just two weeks of release. So is this going as well as other historical films in the MCU? Again, it's not doing as well as some of the best, but it is definitely doing better than what many people had expected for it. And as I mentioned in the very beginning, not only do you see the film around $546.3 million worldwide, but also you have this film having a very good second weekend offshore, as it mentions, making $69.8 in 50 markets, having a 50% drop from its opening, which is better in the same markets compared to Thor Love and Thunder and Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness, both of which had a 56% drop in their second weekend, and even besting that of Spider-Man No Way Home. Now, Spider-Man No Way Home had a much larger opening weekend, which helps to account for why that number was bigger, but the fact that the film is doing about the same tracking internationally even as Thor Love and Thunder and Doctor Strange, both of which had different endings, right? You had Thor Love and Thunder ending around $750 million, and then you had an extra $200 million made by Doctor Strange, is the reason why I think Black Panther is going to make at least $800 million when all is said and done, and likely will make even a little bit more, depending just on how much, uh, how well it does in the subsequent weeks ahead. I don't think the film's going to get anywhere close to the $1.3 billion of the original Black Panther, but there's no denying at this point that the film is doing well enough to be able to hit its break-even point and also to make be able to make some profit to boot, including upwards of $100 plus million in net gain profits, which, again is just, no matter how you spin it, a, a, a good takeaway, a good number. Uh, and again, I don't like this movie. I think this movie is a terrible film, objectively speaking, but there's no denying that at this point, we have to admit that subjectively, there are people who are enjoying this movie, who are passing this film's positive word of mouth to enough of a degree for the film to be able to do well. And this is even before the Thanksgiving weekend, which, we're, as again, I'm sure, going to help this film catch up to some of the other movies that I've mentioned that it is currently in competition with historically. So looking at the actual numbers themselves, Black Panther Wakanda Forever made six 67.3 million dollars which is a 63 percent drop this is what was again expected for this movie right now it's looking at 287.9 million domestically so this film's going to easily pass 300 million dollars domestically by the end of next weekend and i think there's a case to be made that the film could end up getting close to 500 million when all is said and done we'll have to wait and see exactly what the third fourth and fifth weekends look like because again is this going to have long-term legs on it We'll have to wait and see. There really is no competition that's going to be going up against this movie, though, which is why if this, if any film really at this point in time is going to have the ability to do that, it would be this movie not having that competition. The menu from Searchlight, that's right, Disney had to take away the Fox name there. Uh, the menu made $9 million based off of around a $30 million budget. That means the film is, yeah, it's doing okay. Might be able to make its money back. We'll have to wait and see. Haven't heard a whole lot about it. it does feature a cast that I, that I actually like, so I might try to go see this film at some point especially over the holiday, especially over the break. But um, yeah, it's still going to be a little bit hard to say whether or not the film will make its money back. It's a little too early to call on that film. You also had The Chosen Season 3 Episodes 1 and 2 get a theatrical release for Fathom Events, so $4,000 per screen, $8.2 million in over 2,000 screens. Pretty uh, good numbers there, so kudos to The Chosen for doing well. Black Adam dropping to the number 4 spot, dropping another 44%. So even though that's not a terrible number drop-wise, 
this is pretty much the only place and the only market it's making money. It's not really making much anywhere else in the world. So this movie, the chances of it getting to $200 million domestic are slim. Uh, possible but slim and the, the 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 chance of this film getting to its break even of 500 is is basically non-existent right now this film is 80 million in the red this film is probably going to well end well north of 50 million in the red when all is said and done which is yet another box office flop and failure for warner brothers cannot say that i'm that surprised the film was not all that great i think it was a, maybe a, a hinge or maybe a tinge better than black panther and i say that only because the runtime was not nearly as wrong <laughs> as long um both are not good good films but i think this goes to show you what happens when you have an established fan base of MCU stands versus the typical DCEU stands and how they're again different numbers different audiences and clearly that MCU has an advantage as far as the actual starting off point of people guaranteed to go see your movie no matter how good or bad it is uh, versus what the DC universe is offering from Warner Brothers. So again, we'll of course wait and see what the other Warner Brothers films do going forward, especially with Zasloff now in charge, if he's going to make some changes to the actual budgets of the film, he probably should because they're spending way too much on these projects, but ultimately we'll have to wait and see long-term what that will be. Ticket to Paradise, again, the film I still really have no interest in going to see, still making $3.2 million, a 46% hold from its previous week, so continuing to do very well. Brand new release of She Said, making $2.2 million. This is a film based in and surrounding the events that dra dramatize basically retelling of the origins of the hashtag Me Too movement. This film cost $35 million or so to make. So let's just say I'm, I'm happy to see that a film that they decided to make at a time when people are really just not even interested in that <laughs> in, in that part of history. Um, yeah. It's going to be a pretty big a pretty big box office flop uh, based off of these early numbers here. Uh, I'm sure it'll get a lot of awards attention. Will it be enough to make its money back? Who knows? But at this point in time, it's... Yeah. It's not looking good just based on the numbers that we have in front of us. La La Crocodile is also continuing to hold on, but I just don't know how much running room it has. It's continuing to make up every week. Uh, the international numbers, I think it added another 4 to $6 million compared to last weekend. So it's chipping away at its break even, but it's still not quite there. Smile dropping 51% even after being out for so many weeks. Uh, again, very impressive from uh, Paramount here. Smile has been just a very impressive movie, and so kudos to them for doing this. Um, and then you also have a new film. I'm assuming that this is a, a new Bollywood movie making $1 million at 300 screens. So that's a pretty good per theater ratio there. And then rounding off the top 10, you have Pray for the Devil, which made $935,000. Uh, this film basically is running out of steam, but because there is still no projected budget for this movie, I can't say whether it is a flop or not. Now let's go ahead and look at the numbers for Black Panther. Right, right now, internationally, if you're looking at the numbers.com, by the way, they have not updated their numbers. That is the reason why I'm using this site. I hate using Box Office Mojo, but they are the only ones that are having the actual uh, international numbers complete, at least as of the recording of this video, it could have changed by the time you're watching it. But as of recording this video, this is not including the updated numbers for the international. And so right now, worldwide, you're looking at the film having around $546.2 million. So as you can see, the domestic is still going to have the edge. And I think that's going to be the, the, the truth going, you know, I think that's going to be the truth, uh, you know, going ahead and pushing forward. But what I think is very interesting is that because this film is tracking ahead of films like Doctor Strange and ahead of films like that of, 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 of Thor Love and Thunder, the chances of this movie getting to certain numbers domestically and internationally become that much more likely. And uh, I'll go ahead and, and bring this chart up now just to show you what I mean. So right now we're comparing Black Panther Wakanda Forever, Doctor Strange, Thor Love and Thunder, and the original Black Panther film. So at the same point in its release, right? You're looking at right now the domestic for Black Panther Wakanda Forever at 287.9. You had Doctor Strange at 292 at the same point of its release. Now, here is where you're going to see the numbers start to change because this coming week, you're going to have a lot of kids off from school, a lot of families off from work as well, and you also are going to have a pretty big influx of box office ticket sales. And so because of that, I suspect that the film will have a much better uh, second week number, right? Second full week number versus that of, of Doctor Strange. And so I would not be surprised if by the end of its third weekend, it has surpassed the domestic of Doctor Strange, which would put it in a very good position to say that it will likely end much higher than the end domestic result for Doctor Strange. If you compare this to the numbers for that of Thor Love and Thunder, as you can see, it's doing much better than what Thor Love and Thunder had at this point of its release, which is why it's going to do a lot better than that. Remember, though, Love and Thunder ended at $750 million worldwide. 
That is why I suspect that saying 800 million is a minimum for Black Panther at this point is just very, uh, again, it, it would take a lot for this movie to not get to that point. Um, it's, of course, nowhere near the $406 million domestic that it had in the original Black Panther film that, of course, has been adjusted for inflation, but it is still doing well versus these other films uh, in comparison. And again, let's go ahead and look at the final total for Doctor Strange. So if the movie is able to catch up to Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness this week, which I suspect it will, and you can kind of see the pathway for how that could happen. Doctor Strange ended at $411 million domestically. There is therefore an argument to say that Black Panther could definitely end up closer to $500 million and maybe even reach it. This is something that I've been saying for months now. I've been saying that people are going to sleep on the domestic total for Wakanda forever. People forget the first film made $700 million domestically and had a massive showing. And a big part of that was because the film appealed, uh, appe yeah, yeah, had appeal rather to the African-American community here in the United States. And that had a massive impact. And I'm not going to be, and I will not be surprised if we see similar types of holds domestically because of that very fact, which is why $500 million domestic, I would say, is at least a possibility. You then compare that to the 400 million international number for Thor Love and Thunder and the 540 million dollar number for Doctor Strange. And then you remember that this film's second weekend in those same markets is seeing a stronger hold versus those two movies. You see why I also would suspect that the film actually has a chance of even getting to four to five hundred million dollars internationally. What does that mean? It means that this is gonna be a movie to watch because though personally I don't think there is really a pathway for the movie to hit a billion dollars. It is not outside of the realm of possibility with where this film is currently tracking. Keep in mind, just because it's tracking better in certain markets does not mean that every single market has already been brought into play or that it will do as well long term where, you know, where Doctor Strange and Thor Love and Thunder had done as well. So we, of course, will have to still wait and see. There's a lot that can happen internationally. There's a lot that can happen domestically. The fact of the matter is, though, having the film end somewhere between Thor Love and Thunder's $750 million and the 950 versus Doctor Strange, I think, is a very likely scenario. Even though the film started well far behind that of Doctor Strange, it is making it up in different ways, and I think will surpass it domestically going forward. So I just wanted to have these numbers up because... Again, this is something that I warned about. Some people saw the Friday to Friday drop off and forgot that the Thursday number previews take into account, or rather, they forgot to take into account the Thursday night previews of week one for Black Panther's Friday, because again, those get added together. And that's why you saw such a massive percentage drop off. But then they forgot that this is what happens with most big budget films, most Hollywood releases, most big budget Hollywood releases, most um, of these massive uh you know, superhero films especially, right? Because that's kind of what has dominated the market for many years now. They tend to have massive Friday to Friday drops because of those Thursday openings, but then they end up making it up on the Saturday and Sunday. We saw the same thing happen here, right? Some people were spelling gloom and doom for this movie's worldwide totals and, and end result totals and, and, and the ability to make its money back, but they forgot kind of, again, looking at this historically. That's why I always try to look at these films, whether I like them or not, because I'm not, definitely not a fan of Black Panther, uh, definitely not a fan of this movie. Again, the first movie I gave a B minus to, and I thought that was generous. This film I ended up giving like a D, D plus C minus to, which also I think is generous because I think the acting, some of the acting in the film at the very least, was was worthy of, of commendation, whereas the rest of the film kind of fell apart for me objectively. But uh, the fact still remains, whether I like a movie or not, the numbers are what they are, and I'm going to follow them where they ultimately lead. As I mentioned, as you can see, that $500 million num number there has not been updated yet. The $258 million is not the updated number um, for this movie's uh, total uh, right now. So that's the reason why this is different than what you saw on this site, right? It should be at five, uh, rather, it hasn't updated the domestic number at this point in time. So once it updates the, the domestic number, we will have a, uh, an updated chart here and have a better idea. So actually, we can already can kind of compare these and see exactly why this film has a pretty good chance. Looking at some of the other films, though, The Menu, right, $15.2 million in its opening weekend. The Chosen, getting a uh, theatrical release, episodes one and two, did pretty well there. Black Adams, $366 million, as you can see, bottom of the charting. And some people might try to say, yeah, but Black Panther's also kind of bottom of the chart right now. Um, but as I said, I think that that might end up changing over time. And even if it does still end up being bottom of the chart, that does not mean that it loses money. That just means based off the last five years of, 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 of movie releases that 95% of the films released fall somewhere in this category historically uh, based off of its opening weekend. And so um, that does not ultimately mean, though, the film's going to end up losing money. So I just wanted to point that out as well. Since they haven't updated the domestic numbers, um, it's that's that's the reason why I, I won't pull up the charting there until that has updated. Ticket to Paradise at $168.8 million. Okay. She said, that's, that's right. Yeah, the... <laughs> 
<laughs> Based on the Pulitzer Prize winning investigation and best selling novel. Yeah, I'm sure everyone wants to see that. La La Crocodile, $78.2 million, and then Smile at 213.8. Let's go ahead and go to some box office charting because I know people love the box office charting. So the menu, as I had mentioned, let's go ahead and see if we can back out of this just a little bit. So that way it's a little easier to see, for at least for me. Uh, so the budget for the menu is $30 million. The budget for She Said is at $32 million. Break even, therefore, for the menu is around $75 million, whereas She Said's around $80 million. Again, those are estimates. Right now with the $15.2 million, opening for the menu it means it's looking at 35 million in the red so again you can see why the film might be able to make its money back we'll have to wait where the second weekend numbers are going to be and then she says 2.8 million dollars makes me think that it probably won't because it needs to make 80 million it's only made 2.8 after one week again I, I just I don't see it at this point, but you never know. The $546 million has been made by Black Panther so far. Again, this is where my, my charting is coming into play. At $546 million, that means if this follows typical historical trends, right? So if these first two weeks total account for 70% of the end result, that means that 546 would be 70% of 780. So at minimum, I project the film to make $780 million. At maximum, it'll crack a billion. Now... That means the average of that is around 936. Most films tend to fall around that average of around 60%, um, again, compared to its first two weeks. And so if that indeed happens, you're looking at a film that's going to do much better than Thor Love and Thunder, $750 million, but also not quite as well as Doctor Strange and Multiverse of Madness. Hopefully you can understand why I've spelled out the scenarios where this film could end up outperforming in different ways and actually catching up to the uh, release of Doctor Strange based off of where it currently is in the markets internationally and also the chance that it has to be able to catch up and surpass the domestic total for Love and, or rather for, uh, for Doctor Strange at this point in time. But based off these numbers, that means I'm projecting the film to make somewhere between 93 million in net gain profits and a max of 280 most likely going to be somewhere around 100 to 150 million dollars in net gain profits if i had to guess but the fact remains this film is going to hit its break even point of 625 by the end of its third week of release and i know that there might be other channels out there that have different metrics and use different standards and hey that's good on them those aren't the standards that i use i've been using these for years and they've served me very well and i think that mine especially take into account um things that you typically don't really have right so some people say well the marketing costs more for this movie okay well, then also then if you're going to bring up it costing more marketing wise, well, then don't you also have to take into account any tax credits that aren't taken into account and any uh, promotional materials like product placement as well and the amount of money they'll get from that? I mean, again, if you want to play those types of games, we, we can try to get into the nitty gritty, but it becomes that much more complicated. So, again, these are estimates 625 million as a break even. It's not an exact, but it is an estimate. This film is looking to easily pass that up which is why I think that the chance of the film actually being a break even when all is said and done is just, I think, very likely uh, based off of the numbers that we have available to us that have actually been released. You compare that to Black Adam's $366 million. Right now, it's $80 million in the red, looking like it's going to definitely fall in between that $85 and $42 million in the red number. Again, the chances of it getting to a break even point are basically non-existent at this point in time. Ticket of Paradise is now 6.4 million in the black, so kudos to them. La La Crocodile still 28 million in the red, which is why, again, as I said, I don't think the film is going to be able to make it. Smile is continuing to drop off, but again, was able to make the money where it counted over $100 million in net gain profits for that movie. The one last thing I will mention, though, before ending this video is let's go ahead and compare the first two weeks numbers here for Wakanda Forever versus some of the other major releases. So let's go ahead and compare this to other other films that had similar releases. So first, Love and Thunder. Love and Thunder did much worse, right? It was at 497 worldwide at the same point of its release. You can see why the $750 million that Thor Love and Thunder had is very likely going to be not really in the cards for Black Panther. What Black Panther getting to five, or rather getting to $800 million uh, internationally is very likely just based off of the difference between this movie and, uh, and it um, versus anything else. And so that's, again, doing much better than where this film was tracking. And this film ended around $750 million, which was within the range that I had originally projected. Putting it up against Jurassic World Dominion, all right? This movie right here, just barely crossed a billion dollars by the end of its run. It's not tracking as well as Jurassic World Dominion, but again, uh, there is always that outside chance that the film could end up doing much better because this film also had massive drops um, in the subsequent weeks in the various markets, but it had just enough energy to get willed to the billion dollar mark. Top Gun Maverick, obviously this is a different scenario because this had a historic drop 
from week one to week two of around only 15% and only added on to it and ended up doing so much better than my projections because it was, again, one of those anomalies that happens, you know, every every year or so. There's always one or two films that will, again, overperform in these ways. A lot more common that films underperform. But then we also compare that to Doctor Strange. So again, this film, not nearly as high as where Doctor Strange was at the same point of its release, but Doctor Strange was projected to get to 982.9 million and only capped at around 950. Now, some might say, well, then doesn't that mean that the film has a chance of coming in underneath the 780 million that you said was the min- was the minimum for the film. Yes, however, if we're looking at the drops and we're looking at the fact that it's performing better internationally than what Doctor Strange did and what really it has any right to do and that it is still performing pretty well domestically and that there's a holiday weekend coming up and all these other factors, you can hopefully see why I suspect the film will probably end up uh, making up some ground by the third week of its release and at the very least hitting the break even point of $600 million um, or $625 million. And if anything, also maybe even getting up close to where this was at the same point of its release internationally. I don't really track those past that. I probably should start doing that because I think it would make things a lot more interesting. The reason why I don't wrote though in general is because some films don't always get the release on the same date. And so sometimes, you know, again, numbers down the line can get messed up because of that very fact. Um, so again, that is where it currently stands as, as we, uh, as we stand. So as you can see the numbers, not looking good for Black Adam. Looking quite good, though. Quite promising for Wakanda Forever. And once again, uh, don't ever fall for that Friday to Friday trap. A lot of people did, and turns out there's some egg on face, I would say, um, in, 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 in respect to certain people. Um, and again, I think that if you are at least saying that the film is doing worse than what other films are doing, um, historically, again, not t- doing typical MCU films, the film should have been a guaranteed billion dollar movie. I think that that's definitely a better place to take the conversation because I think that's ultimately true. But yeah, anyone who would be saying the film's going to be a flop or is just not doing well, I just don't think are taking all of these other factors into account. I've been tracking this stuff for years now. I, I, I know what these trends are like. I know, as I, again, I was able to to predict yesterday saying, hey, you're going to see a lot of videos and a lot of articles about this massive drop off Friday to Friday, not taking into account the Thursday numbers from the week before. And also the fact it'll make that up because all, almost all these films end up do make making up to a certain extent. Um, and again, a 63% drop in the week week two release for it is not terrible. And the international number being better than what had been probably expected, especially compared to other films, means Black Panther is definitely going to be one of the top films of the year. Uh, it's going to be one of the highest grossing films of the year and is going to have a decent return on investment for Disney. Um, and again, much better than what Thor Love and Thunder had. Probably not nearly as good as what we saw with Doctor Strange, especially since it cost a lot more than Doctor Strange. But we'll, of course, break those down when we finally have the final numbers. But what are y'all's thoughts about this? Do you think that Black Panther Wakanda Forever has a chance at a billion dollars? Again, I, I, I think that we kind of have to have the conversation. When you make, in the first two weeks of your release, $550 million, Yeah. There, there's definitely a conversation to be had. I, I just personally don't think it's going to be able to do that just based off of the numbers that I'm seeing and based off of the historical standards of the other MCU films and how we're getting very similar word of mouth to those movies, I would say. The question is really ultimately going to be that are the markets where this film is actually tracking well, is actually getting good word of mouth, going to be enough to make up for the other places that it is losing out on some money, especially with a long runtime, in addition to the film just not being all that great. Let me know your thoughts about that in the comment section down below. If you like this video, smash that like button, like the fire button, honestly, and smash the rumble, rumble button. You're all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. And now for a huge special shout out to all of my November Patreon subscribe star and locals members at the Keeper of the Bifrost level and above. Starting off with Patreon with Father Luca Illich. Thank you very much, Father. Garrett Searles, Jaime Irie Heimason, Joe Horn, Jonathan Carney, Laura, the Modern Major General Story, Orange Hat Reviews, who you can check out on YouTube at his channel, Orange Hat Reviews, Rosetta Allen, who also has a YouTube channel that you can check out at Eagle Writer, and Miss Martin Muses, who also has a YouTube channel, Miss Martin Muses, and of course, the amazing Empress of the Universe, Tina B, who you can check out at her YouTube channel, Tina B, where she hosts the show with Stephanie B, one of my mods and one of my Valkyrie, called Soup to Nuts. Check out Soup to Nuts, 
and it premieres pretty much every Friday. So again, shout out to all my Patreon people. Also to all my Subscribestar people, starting off with Matt317. Check him out on Twitch at Matt317. The R, Fast Reaction, Mr. Roy, J-Rod, the Beer Guru, and the K-Man. And the K-Man you can check out over at xtheboundaries.co to follow him uh, as he starts his podcast and also uh, for many of his musical musings as well. Check him out. Very, very talented guy. And then lastly, my locals peeps. We got Miss Minnesota hockey fan. How about a hockey player? UAB Mad Dog, Mike Jackson for the win. J.H. Schwalbach, Brett D90, and the amazing Laura, <laughs> the amazing lawyer, Robert Barnes. Thank you all so very much for supporting me. And if you want your name shout out shouted out at the end of every live stream and video, go ahead and check out the top link in the video description below where you get access to that. Also, you get access to special things like giveaways and also uh, exclusive podcasts I do with John the Flick, Big Flickinger and other guests throughout the month of November and in the previous and, and, and the, yeah, the months to follow as well. And again, if any of that sounds interesting to you, especially the 4K giveaways, Steelbook giveaways, some of them that I have to give away this month are films like Starship Troopers on 4K Steelbook, Top Gun Maverick on 4K Steelbook, amongst many others. If that sounds interesting to you, check out the link and follow the instructions down below. Anyway, you guys are all amazing and beautiful people. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, God bless. 